If I told you that you could get an all aluminum keyboard for one to two hundred dollars, you probably wouldn't be surprised at all. In fact, you'd be able to point me to AliExpress or any number of online stores. But what if I told you you could also get a brass weight, a brass plate, and top mount? Stay tuned till after the break to find out more. What's up everybody, I'm Merlin and welcome back to my show. Today we'll be reviewing the KBD67 Mark II. The KBD67 Mark II RGB is KBD fans' newest iteration to the KBD67 series. Prior to this, you used to have the KBD67 Rev1, Rev2, Hot Swap, and now the KBD67 Mark II, KBD67 Mark II RGB, V1, and V2 variants. This particular review will only cover the KBD67 Mark II RGB V1. It features USB-C, hot swap PCB, QMK and VIA compatibility, thanks to yours truly, brass plate, brass weight, aluminum case, top mount, per key RGB lighting, six degree typing angle, and a total built weight of roughly three pounds and 14 ounces. Let's focus on my particular board. I built this with the Yawk Tactile Purple Trash Pandas available from Novel Keys and the XCA Oblique keycaps from Dixie Mac. This board comes with many options for the PCB. The three currently available are the KBD67 Mark II RGB, which is a solderable PCB designed by IO3, a prominent PCB designer in our community. It features an Atmega 32U4 microcontroller, USB-C, single color backlighting, and an ESD protection circuit. This is awesome. I've seen many boards die to ESD already. However, the ESD circuit only really protects ESB coming in from the USB line. So you could still gather some static electricity and touch your microcontroller. Don't do that. The other options are the two PCBs with RGB backlighting and hot swap capability. As I stated earlier, what I have is the KBD67 Mark II RGB V1 variant. There is now a V2, so everyone who buys this board straight up from KBD fans should be getting the V2 variant. V1 had an ARM microcontroller, which is great because that meant you could turn on almost all of QMK's features and put in as many macros as you want. V2 goes back to the Atmega 32U4 microcontroller, but it adds ESD protection as well. First, things that I dislike. Number one, naming. Why does name matter, Merlin? QMK firmware is built uniquely, for the most part, on a per keyboard basis. So you can't flash firmware built for keyboard A onto keyboard B, or vice versa. Quality control. From the get-go, as soon as I unpackaged this board, I immediately noticed scratches, dents, and dings all over. PCB. So this is funny, it's kind of an intermittent thing. I feel like some days my PCB just won't work. Missing part. Hot swaps don't really work well on a top mount board. So for the KBD67 Mark II, what it does is you can screw your PCB into the plate. There are mounting points all over it. That's great and all, but I didn't exactly get enough screws and some of the screws that I did get weren't the correct type of screws hollow sounding, this board rattles like no other. When fully built, the rattling is minimized, but it is still super obvious. I recommend getting some foam just to dampen it out a bit. If you've seen my other videos, you know that I don't like loudly advertised logos. Good thing is, when you're looking at this board, you don't see KBD fans anywhere. However, if you turn it upside down, that's where you see the branding. If you don't like this logo, you can't just make your own weight and put it on. The logo is part of the case and part of the weight. Anodization. The anodization on this board seems very brittle, which is probably why when I got it brand new, there were already scratches, dents, and dings. 
Now that we're done with all the bad stuff, we can now talk about the good stuff, all the stuff that I love about this board. Let's start with the layout. The layout is what is known in QMK as the layout underscore 65 underscore ANSI underscore blocker. Having a blocker helps separate the arrows from the rest of the mod keys. It allows me to easily locate where the arrow keys are and avoids mispresses of any key next to it. I also think it's more aesthetically pleasing. Wait, it's just a little over three pounds, which to me is the perfect weight for a board of this size. You can pick it up, you can move it around your desk super easily. Mounting style. This board is top mount, which means the plate, which the PCB is affixed to, is mounted to the top half of the case. This usually gives you a more softer feeling when you're typing it's not as hard as a tray mount case. Just a few years ago, a majority of boards were tray mount. Top mount was a purely custom feature which you had to spend four, maybe $500 just to get. Plate. Like most of the features on this board, a brass plate is typically a characteristic of a much more expensive board. In general, brass is a harder material and will give your switches more stability and a slightly stiffer feel when typing. Typing angle. This board has a six degree typing angle. This allows me to practically use any keycap profile I desire, even SA. Price. This kit is available on KBD Fan just under $200. That is amazing given the features that this board has. Options. As I mentioned earlier, there are multiple PCBs you can choose from. So what if you don't like soldering or are intimidated by the process? No worries, we got hot swap for you. What if you do like soldering? No problem, we got that too. What if you're elite gamer and like RGB? We got that too. Just make sure you select the right PCB for your needs. Final impressions. To be honest, I'm not really happy with this keyboard. I think just the overall process soured the experience for me. Like imagine getting a brand new board and noticing right off the bat chips, nicks and scratches. It's just, it's just too much. Like, don't get me wrong. This is a great board. You're not gonna find another board in this same price range with all these features. Like the board is good, just that perhaps I'm jaded, <laughs> who knows. Since writing this review, I've actually gone out and bought a V2 PCB. Hopefully the overall experience will be better once I swap that out. Well, Merlin, since you don't really like this board, what's gonna happen to it? Well, since it's already got nicks and scratches, this might be my carry around everywhere board. I'm not gonna feel too bad if I add another dent or scratch. Hopefully this new PCB will make the experience a lot better. Anyway, thank you everyone for watching all the way up till now. If you have this board or just wanna know more about it, definitely hit me up in the comment section down below and I'll try my best to get back to you. If you want to see the build stream or even the upcoming build stream and typing sounds, I will also provide the links down below, so check that out as well. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this review and I will see you all next time. Goodbye now.